guys, this is the third part of the video series, and uh, as you can see, the test server which we are replicating it's completed, and the state is now so protected. It took around one hour, close to one hour, for the complete replication to happen and to uh, you know uh, enable the first protection point. Those are some of the process which happens in the background. So we see a health status warning. That is because never performed successful, which means we never did a test failover. So that's why when you go to this option, uh, it shows a warning. Apart from that, um, you know, the replication is happening and the status shows LD. And uh, you can see here the small uh, diagram, right? It clearly shows like what we have done so far. We have an on-premise VMware vCenter and that one has a test server which we are replicating to azure site recovery using azure site recovery replication appliance which is deployed and then it uses a cache storage account to store the data here and that's this and also um this is the source machine right i just wanted to show you uh there is a couple of things which gets installed one is the Azure Site Recovery Mobility Service uh, Agent, and then the Azure VM Agent. So these two gets installed as part of preparing the machine for replication. Okay, so now um, we completed the step two here, and we are going to the article number three, which is to run a test failover. So this one, as I mentioned, right, uh, in Azure, we have a test failover option which uses a test network which we designate and the VM will get failed over there without impacting any of the production server, which means the production server will be running as is. So if we go back to the production server, let's check the website and the website is up and running. Now let's go ahead and do a test failover. So this video is about performing test failover. So there are two options. One, we either go to the replicated items from here, we can click on test failover or the actual failover. Or if you just go into the VM, there is an option for test failover. So the article talks about the test failover, the button here. So these are some of the uh, steps which you can see in detail. And there is also a recovery plan which we can create as part of test failover or the actual failover. So right now we do not have any uh, recovery plan, right? So ideally we can uh, create one also, the recovery plan. So if you go here, we can create a new recovery plan. Third machine target is okay. Here. Here there is only one machine because there is that. Here. So this will help you when you have uh you know multiple VMs to fail over. So you can just come to this plan and then do a test failover. Or if you want to do a customization, if you go to custom, what basically does is imagine you have three tier application where you want the database to come up first. So you can put that in a group one, and then we can create one more group and put the set of uh, other machines in group two. Similarly, you can form a group. So how it works is first, once the group one machine powers on, and then the second group two starts. So that's how it works. So in our case, it's a very simple one. Uh, I just have one machine to fail over. And the other options which I want to show you here is we, if you need to know the status of your appliance and everything, you can just click on this site recovery infrastructure, which will take you to this is Azure, this is VMware. So if you click on ASR, it will show you the replication appliance which we deployed on prem, right, with the IP, everything. And what's the status? It is healthy, and the it is tagged to which we center, and the replication policy. What we created, it will show you that details. 
So that options can be found there in the site recovery infrastructure and the agent settings. So the agent, which I just showed you on the source VM, which is replicating, right? It will get auto updated if this option is enabled. Okay. Uh, now I will go ahead and do a failover. Uh, so I just go to the site recovery and then replicated items. Or I can go to my plan, which I created, but I will just go here and do a test recovery. In the plan, it is more easy because uh, if you go here, you can do customization of your plan, select the machine, and then if you go to, uh, let's see. Okay, uh, since I don't have more machines, I'm not getting that options. But then usually uh, we have an option to tag the network everything. So that should be fine. So let me go to replicated items. And then do a test failover. So uh, the other thing before we do that, this warning, as I mentioned, it is because we never did a test failover, right? So once we do that, that also should be cleared. So do a test failover and failure direction. Yes, it's from VMware to Azure. And since it's a test failover, no need to worry about your production server. Let it be running. And then uh, we already selected all the network, everything previously when we created the, uh, the protection group and everything, right? So no need to choose which network and anything. Uh, and it leaves the latest recovery plan. Uh, point to do the failover. So you can just click on OK. And you can see it is saying starting the test failover. So that process has started. So basically, what it does is it will choose the network details what we gave previously. It will go create a virtual machine from the storage which is getting replicated. And once the virtual machine is done, uh, it will be powered on and we can do the testing to make sure. It is same as per the on-prem. In an ideal scenario, right, if there's a production uh, level setup, usually there is a different approach we follow. We need to first analyze what kind of application it is. Is it dependent on your uh, domain controllers? If yes, then first the domain controller should be set up on Azure. And then uh, if there's any database requirement or if there's any firewall or if we need to put a load balancer in front of the machine. So all those things has to be done. But in my case, since it's a small uh, demo, which I'm testing, uh, I would say uh, for me, it is it's very straightforward. Just select that machine with a static website and I'm just doing a failover. So it will take some time. Basically, it will create all the virtual machine, everything. I'll just pause the video until this process is completed. It took about eight to 10 minutes to complete the test failover. And as you can see, the uh, test failover is completed. So the task is done. So if you go to the replicated items, now we don't even see that warning now anymore because we already did the test failover. But now the status is clean up the test failover pending. So first thing is let's go ahead and test how the test failover happened. So if you go back to home virtual machine, um, yeah, here you go. The VM2 is the website is the virtual machine which we paid over. It is running. So we click on that. And uh, yeah, we cannot access that with the private IP address. So uh, to test what we will do is we will just assign a public IP address to it. So I just quickly create a public IP address. I'll go with IP before standard.
think he would be anything if I want to. Um, so I just put V into the pure. Let's see if it's available. Okay. It's not mandatory, but I'm just giving that. And the resource group, I'll put it in the same resource group. So redundant. then I just give it a simple one. Okay, so the public IP is created. I will go ahead and associate this public IP with the virtual machine. So the resource type is network interface and the virtual machine is this test. Okay. Ideally, if I had a jump server or a bashing server, I could have used that to connect to the private IP and then check. Uh, since I don't have any VM, uh, I'm just using a public IP to bypass this connection through a public network, which is not recommended, but for this test, yes, should be okay. Okay, so that's done now. Let's see if our website works. So I just type this public IP. I think there is no inbound, it does not contain any security group. So, okay, so there is no NSG uh, associated with this. So, let me quickly go ahead and uh, you know, just add an you know, the security firewall rule. I just create an NSG and then I'll allow the RDP connection. Okay, guys, so. Basically, what I did is I just created a network uh, security group with a couple of inbound rules. One is to allow port 80 and then the RDP connection, uh, which is not recommended to allow the RDP. You can see the warning here, but this is just test and then I'll tear it down. And then once that's done, I associated that security group with the VM test. So this is my public address. So now if I go and put this here, you see, the website is opening up just like how we saw in the on-prem server. And I can also take an RDP to validate within the machine. So if I put the public IP here, and then let me choose um, password. So now we are into the RDP of the test failover machine in the Azure Cloud.
And let me just open a browser. So this one is a normal when you do a failover, you get this mission warning. So we can close this out. And then once the browser is launched, I'll type local host. And yes, the website is working from here as well. So we checked that within the failover machine, uh, it is working within that. And also we uh, took RDP. Um, so sorry, this is the RDP. We also did the test using the public IP and that is also working. Okay, it's uh, because of the uh, network. Now, if you go back to the VM, right? Uh, previously, we didn't have that settings done. So now if I go back to the VM, I go to the networking, you would see that I have associated uh, the security group here. And uh, the security group has two properties. Okay, so this concludes the test failover. The test below works fine and if we are happy with this results then we should be able to do the actual failover so in the next video we will go ahead and see how to do the actual failover the steps are pretty much same like how we did uh, but then we have to follow a couple of more steps like uh, you know shut down the source in an event of disaster recovery then the source will be shut down but if not like for this kind of activity we need to shut down the so source machine and then failover then commit the failover. So now let's go ahead and clean up the failover, which is done now, test failover. So I go back to the uh, site recovery, replicated items, and I can either click here, clean up test failover, Don't see an option here, or oh, it just says the why. But here, if I go clean up this failover, I can say test completed successfully. So it will delete the virtual machine and all the resources created for that. So the RDP to that machine is closed, should be okay because it's cleaning up the machine now. So it should take a few minutes. Just took about two minutes and then the cleanup is completed. So if we go back here, it should show the um, replicated items as healthy and it's protected again. And the failover is also healthy. All right, so in the next video, let's do the actual failover. Thank you guys.